the captain speaking. <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> Girls, your school days are the best days of your life. You can be anything you want to be. Have you heard that before? You have. Okay, well it's a myth, don't worry. Okay. So bear with me. Now I sat amongst you 31 years ago but I had to wear this like really stiff white dress. But, you know, how's your experience been here at school? Uh, good school, eh? High standards. <laughs> oh, when I sat amongst you, I, I did academically all right. I got a couple of prizes. So, so I did all right at school, academically, yes. On the sporting front, not that great. The person, in fact, to confirm, confirm that is Mrs. Lynn Martin. <laughs> I was fond of her because she turned a blind eye that during my matric year I managed to dodge every single swimming lesson. <laughs> Eventually I just gave up writing those fake notes from my mother <laughs> and, and then I just lurked in the change room until everyone else was in the pool and then I went and sat in the sun with the girls who had genuine notes. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, I hated swimming back then, but nowadays I still hate it. <laughs> I only have to swim once every three years. For my flying license, I have to demonstrate my competency 
in ditching. That means I can swim around the raft and I can help people. That's if we're flying over the ocean and all our engines fail. But I really hope they don't because, <laughs> because the Atlantic is going to be even colder than the Weinberg Girls swimming pool. <laughs> So, yes, I, I did all right, and I've, I've actually brought something to prove it. It's my school testimonial. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, our legendary principal, Miss Joan M. Murray, she'd write nice things about you so she could get a good job. So, let's see. Oh, my, it's, it's not very long, but, you know, my... <laughs> Tanya got a, a nice long complimentary paragraph, but let's see what this says. Uh, Jane is an intelligent girl with considerable latent potential. <laughs> oh, this is not particularly glowing, is it? It's just as well no one ever asked to see it. <laughs> so maybe I'd upset Miss Yuri. Hmm, maybe it was because when, you know, that dreaded intercom used to go off in the class. <laughs> okay. Would Jane and Tanya report to the principal's office? <laughs> maybe it was the things I used to say back to Miss Yuri in her office. Or maybe it was during her religious instruction classes, R.I. I actually mastered the art of sleeping upright you know, with my head in my hands. <laughs> or maybe it was when I filled in the form, which was actually used to complete this testimonial. And under the space for future profession, I wrote pilot. And I think Miss Yuri thought I was playing the fool with her. Well, I wasn't. Because, you see, I had already decided to fly. You know, just before I came into matric in the Christmas holidays, I went, you know, on our family holiday, we went in a light aircraft for part of the journey, and it was so exciting. You know, we landed on the sand runway, and then we had to clear the cows off before we could take off again. And it was so exciting, I just knew I had to be a pilot. So, Miss Yuri, I mean, to be fair to her, she wasn't the only person who thought I was joking. Uh, and you know, all of the other girls in my class thought it was totally hilarious. And some people even made fun of me. <laughs> like our Afrikaans teacher, Mrs. Webb. <laughs> Mrs. Webb, who... Uh, you know, on rainy days, she'd wear these little red wellies and a, a Macintosh, but then she taught in them as well. In class, she wore her Macintosh. And she had a talent for mixing up names. So she would look in my direction and she would yell out, Jane Twydale or Helen Tremboth. But now, Helen Twydale was the girl who sat directly behind me. So Neither of us was ever quite sure who was on the receiving end <laughs> of the Oatkuk Parada. Anyway, Mrs. Webb said to us, we must say our future profession in Afrikaans. I thought, hmm, what's a pilot in Afrikaans? Uh, the word I was looking for was fleenir, but my Afrikaans was only marginally better than my swimming. <laughs> So I said, Ek gaan a loods wees. Now I was half right, because a loods is a pilot, but it's a harbour pilot, you know, that guides the ships in. But it has another meaning as well. And Mrs. Webb looked at me and she said, So, you're going to be an aircraft hanger. <laughs> Mrs. Harding has invited me here to speak today precisely because I became a pilot. Although she never would have invited me if she'd known how naughty I was at school. <laughs> My friend Tanya and I used to play tricks on our biology teacher. Mainly, I think we didn't like her because one day I was crunching my apple behind my biology book and the teacher said, Jane, don't be so blatant. 
So one day we tied a tin can to a bumper. And another day we put marbles in her hubcap. <laughs> now that we'd chosen that particular day because she'd sent Tanya to detention and Tanya took up a seat by the window in the detention room and she watched the teacher drive her car and she drove down the driveway and she stopped, got out, looked. She was obviously looking for a, a tin can again. But nothing. Drove, stopped, got out, looked. I oh, apparently just made the detention so worthwhile. <laughs> but I know that all the teachers are safe from you because these days cars have got molded plastic bumpers and the wheels don't have metal hubcaps. So I was naughty here and cheeky. But is that all bad? You know, there's two sides to every coin. And if I'd been you know, a really good girl and I'd been you know, very sort of compliant with everything and conformist, then I would never have chosen such an outlandish profession as being a pilot. And if I'd been good and submissive to Miss Yuri, I would never have had the fighting spirit in me to overcome the obstacles I've had in my way. See, that's what your weaknesses are, girls. They are simply your strengths that you are not using correctly. And God made you exactly the way you are for a reason. So I went out and became a pilot. And as you heard in the intro, I, I had to learn to fly privately at a flying club at Cape Town Airport because uh, the Air Force, they wouldn't allow women to apply. They uh, couldn't apply. So they said they couldn't take women because they didn't have ladies lose. <laughs> but I got a commercial pilot's license in 1984. And then I found out how difficult it was as a woman in the 80s trying to get a job. In fact, one oak who interviewed me said, ah, what's your ambition in life? Do you get married and have babies? But never fear, I got my poetic justice many, many years later when I was flying from New York to Johannesburg on the 747-400, the jumbo jet, and the same man was a passenger and he said, I'd give my right arm to fly one of these. <laughs> and I couldn't resist it. I reminded him where we'd met before. <laughs> I eventually did get a job up in Namibia. And I flew small planes there. And in the 1980s, the bush war was on. So when you went up north into the operational area, then it was compulsory to fly at treetop height so that the enemy surface-to-air missiles couldn't shoot you down. And then in 1988, I was accepted into the airline as one of their first female pilots. And this is despite the operations manager having said that he would accept women over his dead body, but he remained alive and well. <laughs> And since then, I've flown Boeings and Airbuses, first as a co-pilot, then as a captain. And you know, now I command wide-body Airbus jets, and I just love traveling around the world. So, traveling around the world, and that's the first of the myths that your school days are the best days of your life. Well, it's not true because what lies out there ahead of you, it's so much, much greater. The truth is that your school days are the easiest days because what lies ahead is much more challenging. And it hasn't been easy for me. You know, I've had many challenges. I've had to learn a lot of things the hard way as a woman in a man's world. And I've also made many mistakes. But I'm not going to go into those right now because you know, that's classified as entertainment and this is a very dignified occasion. <laughs> so that's something
something that I never wanted to be, you know, as a woman who made mistakes. But in a way, they became part of the purpose of my life. They made me into who I am. Because I grew so much through them and I gained insight and I gained inner strength that I never knew I had. So that's the second myth. The second myth that you can be anything that you want to be. You can only be what you can be in line with your capabilities. But what you can be is much, much greater than you imagine. You can only be, though, what you can be if you know who you are. And I'm going to give you three questions. Three powerful questions you can ask yourselves that will help you discover. But you must be honest because you know, there's no greater barrier to success than dealing in dreams and fears and believing those are real. You know, you've got to be honest. The truth isn't always nice. But it doesn't matter. You just have to be honest with yourselves. You know, there's no greater barrier, as I said. I mean, I can give you a two-word example of not dealing in reality. Idols audition. <laughs> yes. This is where you see a disconnect between self-knowledge and true ability. <laughs> so, these three questions will help you find the power within you. Because that's what it takes to succeed. It takes more than skill in your job. You know, our skills we get from our education and training, but our power, we can only find it within us. Your power is your, your inner strength. It's your confidence. It's having faith in yourself and self-respect. And only you can find it. Nobody can give power to you. The three questions, they are... Why, what, and how? Ask yourself these every single day for the rest of your life. The first question, why? You can ask this when you no know, things aren't going so well, when you're not feeling that happy. Ask yourself, why do I feel this? Ask, why did I do this? Why do I want this? And the correct answer is because I. You can't say I feel unhappy because he did this and that. This is for you to dig down deep within yourselves and learn how to truly understand yourself. Because there was a time before I learned to ask why that I started believing that my fears were the reality. You know, there are many people who gave me a hard time, people who are prejudiced or jealous, and... I started believing them and trying to be what they wanted me to be. And I was just giving my power away to them. But when I understood myself and I saw what I was doing, then I took my power back. There's a magical consequence, though, to asking that question why, getting to know how you work. Because then I found that I just, as if by magic, I could understand how the world works. I understood human nature. And you need to know that so you can answer the second question, which is what? What are the potential consequences of my actions? Everything, girls, everything that you think and say and do has got consequences. This is a law of the universe. You know, you've still got free will, hey? You can do anything you want as long as you understand that you will have to face the consequences. And wisdom is being able to figure out what they're going to be. Wisdom is also being able to understand how your actions contributed to what's happening in your life. You know, when I had given my power away, then, you know, I'm feeling powerless. Sometimes I was timid and sometimes I was brash. But it's only when I learned to speak my truth that things really came together and worked out in my life. So consequences can be good as well. But I ask you to choose wisely. 
And if you're not sure about the answer, then ask, does this choice honor me? You're not going to get it right all the time, though. You're going to make mistakes. And then you will ask the third question, which is how. How am I going to do this differently next time? I use this on a regular basis when I haven't handled things as well as I would like. You know, if you're facing a challenge in your life, think, how am I going to tackle this? Because then I can come up with a plan. I've asked the right question. I come up with a plan. And I go from that powerless feeling of, oh, I don't know what to do. And I think, yes, I'm back in control of my life. So that question, how, you know, is how you will overcome your challenges. And you'll be able to see it's actually your challenges become part of the purpose of your life because then you can look back and think, well, without that experience, I never would have learned that lesson. Then it becomes part of the greater purpose of your life too, which is to take what you've learned and then you can help other people going through their challenges. And that is what you're truly here for, you know, to help other people in a way that only you can do. And I should say, as only a Weinberg girl can do. Because when you make that contribution to the world, then you know that you've got value in yourself as a person. And you also know exactly where your place is in the world. It's right there in your own shoes. Girls, ask yourselves those three questions every day of your life. Ask. Why do I feel this? What are the consequences? And how am I going to do it differently next time? And then see what a powerful woman you become. And you will do it by being yourself. And remember, it's the individuals who change the world, not the conformists. Your power is within you. And your power will give you inner strength, it will give you your purpose, and it will give you the freedom to be the best you can be, just as God intended.